Viewers of my previous video were amazed you could transmit a television picture with less than 10 parts. In this video, we'll go one better. Here, I'll do it with five. There are some compromises though, and we'll talk about those in a moment. The circuit comprises the crystal oscillator module we used before, in this case 16.381 MHz, though its frequency is not critical, and that output is connected directly to a 1N4148 diode. Being injected into the cathode of that diode is the video input signal via a 5K potentiometer. The setting of that is very important. And finally, the output is tapped off via a 10 picofarad capacitor. The transmitting range is very small, and as there's no frequency selective components, there's output on a multitude of frequencies, from low VHF to UHF. So this is presented as a proof of concept only, and not as something you would use practically. Here's the simplified unit. Just ignore the trimmer capacitors, that's from the previous build, but they aren't connected in this case. The main parts of the crystal oscillator module, the 5K potentiometer, this is the 1N4148 diode, again the leads are too long, this is our 10 picofarad capacitor, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Video is applied through this socket, and the power source is four NICAD batteries, giving five volts. I'll experiment with two signal sources, this cheap DVD player and this video camera. This is actually the camera I normally use for most of my videos. Let's see what results we get. One thing I found was that it was easier to get a good stable picture from the DVD player than from this standalone camera, especially with simple transmitter circuits. We'll just tune across the VHF spectrum. Bear in mind, there's no tuned circuit in any part of this TV transmitter, so there'll be outputs on multiple frequencies. We're now tuning up from about 130 megahertz below our TV channel 5A. There's a signal here. This is pretty good. I'll just vary the potentiometer and see the effect this is at minimum signal from the DVD player as we turn it up a bit here it's not clear so in this case when it's at maximum it's the best picture but your results will vary. Tune up further, and there's a strong signal, but a terrible picture. But if we adjust the potentiometer, we actually get a very good picture. So there's a bit of interaction between the harmonic that you choose to watch and the settings of the potentiometer. I'll keep tuning up. Again, adjusting the potentiometer. Here, it actually goes from positive to negative. I wouldn't call it broadcast quality, but it is very good quality for what is a makeshift transmitter with just five components. What about a range test? I've moved the DVD player and the video transmitter to another room. In fact, a kitchen drawer. Five or six metres away is the portable TV. We'll start tuning from the low VHF range. You have a very clear picture here. This is just below our channel 3, or our old TV channel 3. It's not used anymore. But this is around 80 to 85 megahertz, somewhere around there and that would be the fourth harmonic of our 16.3 megahertz crystal oscillator module. So a strong signal around there. We go up, all these lines you see here are FM broadcast stations. 
and nothing further up. We'll now go to VHF high band. Now we're starting here about 140 megahertz. And this is about the ninth multiple. And there's again a very clear picture. Got another signal here. This would be about 160 megahertz. And you'll notice as we go higher, the signals get successively weaker. Bear in mind that these nice pictures are originating with the DVD player. I wasn't able to get anything this clear with pictures coming from the digital camera. However, all is not lost. We'll add a few extra parts and see what results we can get, as they may be improved. This is our second circuit. Instead of just one potentiometer, there's two. The anode of the diode is isolated electrically, but not in terms of RF, from the output of the oscillator module with a 22 picofarad capacitor. Some DC voltage is permanently applied. That can be varied with this 10K potentiometer. The cathode side is the same as the above circuit with the 5K pot, accepting the video in, and the output being taken via a 10 picofarad capacitor. The two pot version is a crude adaption of this circuit. Click in the description text for a link. The potentiometer on the left is the brightness, while the one on the right is the contrast. But in my case, I found there was significant interaction between the two, and you had to get the settings right to get a decent picture at all. Now we'll just make some adjustments and you'll see how the picture changes. You'll see there's a couple of spots where you can get a picture and somewhere you can't. In fact this is clearer than it was before. You'll notice some interaction between the two controls.